Hey guys, it's Shayu Okimi and welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be talking all about how to use protein effectively to stop breakage. We'll be going into what does protein actually do, how can you use it effectively, and how do you know if you would actually benefit from protein because not everyone benefits from it, but if you are someone who does benefit from it, it can definitely make a big impact in how much breakage you are seeing. So first, how does protein even work? How can I tell if it's something that would actually be good for me? So there are two main things that protein actually does whenever you apply more of it into your hair. The first is that it impacts how rigid your hair is by creating new internal bonds inside your hair. So with hair, there's like a spectrum. And on the spectrum, there are two ends. On one end, it is hair that is super, super soft, super, super flexible, and super, super stretchy. And then on the other end, it's hair that is hard, not flexible, and not stretchy at all. You want your hair to be somewhere in the middle. If it's too soft, too flexible, and too stretchy, it'll look limp, just overly mushy, overly soft, especially whenever your hair is wet, it just feels like it's just gonna disintegrate in your hands, like it has no structure at all. It's very similar to spaghetti. Spaghetti that is too soft acts much like how our hair does when it's on this extreme end of the spectrum. It's just too soft to where it breaks because it's simply too soft and has no structure to it. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have hair that is super hard, not flexible, and not stretchy at all. So this also is it a good thing because you need some of that flexibility to be able to manipulate your hair without it breaking and crumbling. If it's too rigid, it'll just break from being too brittle and being too hard. So you want to be somewhere in the middle. So what protein does is it pushes you towards the side of structure, of hardness, of what we would call strength in some ways. It pushes you towards that side so that you won't be experiencing breakage from your hair being too soft. Moisture or water, on the other hand, is something that pushes your hair towards the other side towards the side of softness, flexibility, and stretchiness. And we need that because we do need our hair to be able to bend and have a little bit more flexibility so that it doesn't break from being too brittle. Water is what we call a plasticizer. Things that allow materials to bend without breaking, allowing materials like our hair to not crumble and break upon manipulation. And so this is where we get the whole term of protein moisture balance. Let me know if that has ever been confusing to you before. I hope this clears it up. To, it used to be confusing to me before, but this is why we want to be somewhere in the middle of the spectrum where we have a good balance of both structure and strength, but also flexibility and softness. So that's the first thing that protein does. It pushes us towards the side of structure, strength, and hardness. So now for this very reason, proteins would benefit you if you are experiencing hair that is on the side of too much softness, especially whenever it's wet because that's when you can better assess your hair's actual structure without hydrogen bonds being present, which is the case when your hair is mostly dry. But whenever your hair is wet and those hydrogen bonds have been broken, then you can really, really see your hair's natural internal structure and you can really test and see, okay, does it feel like super, super soft? Like too, too soft um, whenever it's moisturized, whenever it's wet, whenever I pull on it, does it stretch a lot before it breaks? Do my curls have less definition and look more stretched out and limp? These are all things that tell you that you want something that will push you towards the other side of the spectrum of more hardness, more structure. But now if your hair is the type that you would have to work really, really hard to get it to make it feel too soft, like it already feels pretty hard or has just the right amount of structure where it never feels like too overly soft whenever you moisturize it or get it wet, then protein would not be as beneficial for you because you do not want to be adding more things that will make your hair feel even harder and push it to the side of extreme brittleness. So that's the first thing that proteins do and that's the first way you can assess if protein would actually be something that would benefit you and prevent the breakage from your hair from being too soft and too just like, it feels like it always just wants to break and disintegrate in your hands because it's just, it just has no structure in it at all. And then number two, the way, another way that protein benefits our hair is by something that's really, really fascinating and cool and 
actually extremely beneficial for some people, which is it regulates moisture in our hair. It provides a sort of moisture control and more moisture regulation system in our hair by adding new sites into our hair that will allow water to have something to bind to once it comes inside our hair. So this is where hair porosity plays a big role. So if you have what we call high porosity hair, it just means that your hair is very porous. Think a sponge. There are lots of empty holes where things can get in very easily, but it's just an empty hole. So the things that get into it will also come out just as easily. There isn't anything for the things that come into it to bind to as easily and keep it from escaping. I feel like that's the easiest way to explain hair porosity. So with hair like this, you'll be someone who just, you can absorb a lot of product and a lot of moisture easily, but you lose that moisture very, very quickly and your hair ends up getting drier faster. But with proteins, what they do is they go into those empty holes and those empty gaps in higher porosity hair and they fill them. And they give the water that comes into your hair somewhere to actually bind, new sites to bind to. In addition to creating this film around your hair that also prevents the water that gets in your hair from escaping as quickly. So this is really, really nice and beneficial because while proteins, like I said before, make your hair harder and stiffer, by creating this sort of moisture control and making it easier for water to bind and stay in your hair for longer, it can also help create like this self-regulating machine where your hair has the protein providing its stiffness and rigidity and strength, but also making it easier for water, which gives it that softness and flexibility and stretchiness to stay in your hair for longer. So you have a good mix of both strength and softness through one thing. This is what makes protein really, really good for high porosity hair because it allows it to have this addition of a new regulating system that makes it harder for water to escape the hair as easily and allows your hair to stay moisturized for longer and allows you to avoid the problem of your hair becoming too hard, not because it has too much protein, but because it simply has the inability to keep moisture or water in it for long enough to stay flexible and do all the things that moisture provides. So then protein ends up being able to be the thing that gives your hair the ability to stay softer by just allowing your hair to retain water for longer. So yeah, that's a great thing if you have problems retaining water and you have higher porosity hair. But if you have lower porosity hair, you don't necessarily need that assistance as much. And the thing about applying too much protein into lower porosity hair is that studies have showed that not only does low porosity hold on to moisture really well, but if you do a protein treatment, it'll also hold on to that protein that you put in it really, really well. So lower porosity hair runs a greater risk of protein overload because as you're adding more and more protein into lower porosity hair, it doesn't leave it as quickly and it stays in for longer. And low porosity is the hair type that didn't even really need the protein that much in the first place. And you end up with what is called protein sensitivity, where there's too much protein being stuck in your hair, making it being pushed to the side of hardness, rigidity, starts to feel straw-like, which are all things you want to avoid. So that is something to look out for. But now if you have higher porosity hair, which again just means that you have a hair type that absorbs and releases things like water very quickly due to either just plain genetics or due to any damage you caused to your hair that created gaps in your hair structure from either like chemical damage, from dyeing your hair, bleaching your hair, relaxing your hair, over manipulation damage, high growth fatigue, heat damage, anything that could damage your hair. You would greatly benefit from the structure and moisture regulation proteins provide by filling in those gaps. But if you have lower porosity hair, you don't really need that as much and you run a greater risk of having too much protein get stuck in your hair and leading to a bunch of problems of not being able to get it out and your hair just being left feeling really hard and straw-like. And really the only way to get it out is to just continuously wash your hair with a good clarifying shampoo, give it time and follow up with good moisturizing products. 
So those are the two things that adding protein does. It makes your hair feel tougher and stronger by creating new internal bonds. And then it also allows your hair to hold on to water for longer by filling in those empty gaps and giving the water new places to bind to. So if you fall on the side of the spectrum where protein would actually benefit you, you can incorporate protein into your hair through either leave-ins. A lot of leave-ins actually have protein in it. Another way of incorporating protein is through masks or deep conditioning treatments. They are usually marketed as strengthening and restoring or for highly damaged hair. These usually deposit more protein into your hair at once than a traditional leave-in would at once. And then the third way, the most intense way, which is the way that I'll be using today, is through the two-step famous two-step apogee treatment. And if you want to know why I'm doing this, you could go watch my high girl fatigue video. But yeah, my hair had just been feeling really, really soft and would break a lot easier whenever it was wet. So I thought today would be the day. Let me just go in, all in with this strong, intense protein treatment. So I'm starting by washing my hair with a good clarifying shampoo. Make sure it's clean with no buildup. And then after you're finished washing it, you apply the protein. And I detangled my hair fully before I got in the shower. So right here, my hair is pretty detangled and I'm trying not to tangle it again because after you do the shampoo, you do not go in with conditioner. You go straight in to the Apogee treatment. So you wanna make sure that your hair is already pretty well detangled before you start the treatment. So after I'm finished washing my hair, it's time for the treatment. So you just wanna make sure that your hair is towel, dried but still wet and then you go immediately after in with the first step of the protein treatment so the makers of apogee actually recommend that you use a nozzle tip applicator to apply the protein so if you have one use this i know some people also use a spray bottle they actually recommend you not use a spray bottle just because it doesn't allow for complete application of the product like you can miss some spots and it can clog some of the protein particles can clog the spray bottle and you won't get the right application so it's really up to you if you want to use a spray bottle next time i do this if i do this another time i might honestly use a spray bottle because even if the application won't be as precise, using anything else is very messy. I wasn't able to get a nozzle tip applicator, so I just used the straight bottle, which is pretty much the same, similar as using it from a nozzle tip applicator. But the product is very, very liquidy and very, very runny. It is meant to be used by a hairdresser, someone else doing your hair in a bowl. So they did not make this with the at home in mind <laughs> so just bear that in mind when using this it will drip and it's very very sticky so try and avoid getting it on you because it'll make your skin stick to each other i'm just wearing my towel straight out of the shower but you should definitely either wear a cape around your neck and your body or wrap your towel around your neck and your body so that the product won't get on you but yes essentially you're just supposed to shake the bottle well before use and then i'm just supplying the protein onto my hair makers of apogee also recommend that you comb the product through your hair afterwards to make sure that you get even application i did this every now and then but really judge based on yourself if it's going to cause you too much manipulation to comb through your natural hair just finger distribute it you don't want to risk putting too much manipulation on your hair without there being conditioner in it because all we did was wash our hair with a shampoo. There's no conditioner in our hair. So use your own discretion and don't overdo it and don't be rough on your hair if you decide to use a comb. And after you apply the hair and distribute it, you do not want to go back in and mess with your hair because your hair will harden as a part of the process. So you just leave it alone and you can either use a hooded dryer or a handheld dryer to dry your hair. I started with a hooded dryer and then I noticed there are some parts on the inside of my hair that weren't really drying, but the outsides were dry. So I went in with a hand dryer to help get into those spots inside without agitating my hair because you don't want to mess with your hair too much as it starts to harden. I did that until my all of my hair felt hard. And as you can see in its hardened state, my hair is like fully, fully shrunken. So I can already tell that it's like doing work to like enhance my hair's natural curl pattern. So that was really nice. And then after it was done and fully, fully hardened, I went back in the shower and I rinsed it out. It rinsed out very, very easily as soon as it touched the water. Um, 
my hair soften back up. So once all of my hair was soft and fully coated with water, I then went in in sections to make sure I completely rinsed out all of the product throughout all of my hair. And then after I was sure that all of it was rinsed out, I went in with the second step of the treatment, which is the balancing moisturizer. And I put that in my hair. The direction says to leave it in for two minutes. I left probably left it in for like five minutes while I was in the shower. And then I rinsed it out. And then guys, so the results from this. I was um, interested in seeing how it would make a difference on my hair. Because like I said before, I've been having troubles with my hair. Just feeling super, super soft. And like breaking from being overly soft in the shower. And when I tell you... It made a huge difference in my hair. Like, I don't have those problems anymore. I'm interested in seeing how long this will last, but it very much fixed the problems I was having with high growth fatigue. So I would highly recommend using protein if you, and especially using an intense protein treatment, if you're using some like the baby treatments and it's not getting you as far as you would like, this definitely made a big difference in my hair. And I feel like my hair now feels like it's back to normal. So I'm very, very happy with the results. And I really hope that this video helps you understand how protein actually works. And then a real life example of me <laughs> using protein on my hair and how I was able to use it to bring my hair back to normal. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. You can subscribe if you enjoyed this and it helped you as well. Lots more hair videos coming soon. And yeah, bye.